Hi, me again. Um, as I said I would do on the Facebook page, uh, this is one of my favourite drums. Uh, I don't have a singular favourite. Uh, I have several favourites and as several people over the years have um, asked me, a lot of the time I'd be hard pushed to actually name my five favourite drums. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, this is definitely one of them. It's uh, I have several favourite drums for different reasons. This drum, uh, apart from being a superb, splendid, amazing drum, uh, which has history as well, uh, it actually represents something that I never thought I would have. Um, when I was a kid, uh, twenty, probably twenty. 5, 26, 27 years ago when I was first starting to get interested in, in drums and things I thought the one thing I, well, one of the things I would never be able to afford was a china cymbal um, and typically uh, a child like uh, thinking and manner and as it ended up it was actually one of the first types of cymbal that I ever bought um, albeit it was a second hand one from uh, uh, which I still have uh, it's, a, it's a Colour Sound 5 uh, but anyway, I digress. This uh, this particular drum I never thought I'd have because it was so expensive. And um, the drum in question was at my local drum shop, which was, uh, and still is, Wembley Drum Centre. Um, I'll give you a clue as to where that's near. A uh, big stadium type place. And um, it was, I remember walking into the shop and it was in a case... Uh, opposite the uh, the sales desk, and this was in about ninety nine two thousand or so, and I remember it having um, the, well the price tag was two thousand pounds, and I remember thinking, wow that's amazing, what a lovely looking drum, if only I had the money, and it was kind of a, a hypothetical question at that point because uh, or rhetorical question as well. <laughs> Uh, because I never really thought I would ever spend that much money on a single drum. Obviously, you can get drum kits for less than that, but you can get a half decent drum kit for two thousand um, pounds. But um, that was what got me started, and I and I kind of looked at these drums with uh, a little bit of reverence, as I, I'm sure a lot of people do, uh, and I still do. Um, even now, uh, even though I actually now have two of them, uh, which seems quite crazy to me, but uh, you know, it's the truth of the matter. But the the drum I have here now, uh, and I'll do the other one at another point because that has a story as well. Um, the drum I have here now is uh, this one. Where's the badge? There's the badge. All right, this one, and it's. As many of you have seen before anyway, I'm sure, uh, and the few of you that have actually seen it in person, it's a Craviotto Timeless Timber. And this one is a one of one. So uh, it was, you know, a single, wasn't part of the, like the original run was a run of 200 maple drums. And then they sort of, well, Subsequently, did uh, a run of two hundred birch drums as well, and then there was another run of uh, Steve Maxwell commissioned a run of uh, twenty five birch and twenty five maple, and that's one of the other ones that I've got. And uh, but this one was uh, as I got this from Steve Maxwell in two thousand and six, which is also when the drum is uh, is dated. It, it uh, says it just there. Uh, it's signed obviously by Johnny and uh, it's 2006 and uh, I got this in 2006 and uh, I remember Steve telling me at the time it was one of the last uh, drums that Johnny had done or Timeless Timber drums obviously uh, that Johnny had done and it was one of the nicer pieces of wood that he had um this particular drum actually cost me two and a half thousand dollars uh which is actually still the most expensive drum that i uh single drum that i've bought to date um where well, i say that no that's a bit of a lie because i've actually paid two and a half thousand dollars i think for the other one as well but um 
it's a lot of money, and obviously it was still uh, probably fractionally more than the original one I saw, uh, in, well, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, I can't count. Um, but as crazy as it was, this was 2500 and there was another one for 3000 which actually, I mean, this is uh, an amazing figured drum and I'll, I'll do a, a separate video so you can get a better look at it the the figuring of the the maple is is outstanding it's a it's a wonderful wonderful beautiful piece of wood but the one that was for three thousand was actually even better and uh it, it, it didn't exactly break my heart that i couldn't afford the extra five hundred dollars uh but uh someone got a lovely drum Anyway, but uh, not to belittle this one in any way. Um, it was the first drum, it, it, this was the, well, as I said, it was the most expensive drum that I had bought, and it's the equal most expensive drum I still have bought to date. Um, but um, I decided that I wanted the drum. I, I'd been looking at it for uh, some while, as I do a lot of these things. I don't actually just uh, open my wallet and stick out my you know, card into someone's hands. Uh, I do actually think about a lot of these things. Uh, to look at that lot, you'd actually think otherwise, probably, but uh, it is the truth. Um, in fact, to look around here, in general, you would probably not think that, but it is the truth. Um, I buy very little on impulse. But um, I, I, I decided that I wanted the drum. I sorted out some finance, which I've done a couple of times over the years. Um, I think even though I probably did have the, the, the actual cash to do it at the time, um, the interest rate wasn't too bad, so it was worth paying the extra couple of quid just to have the convenience of paying it off monthly. But uh, I got the drum, I ordered it in 2006, um, something in my head tells me it was uh, about June or July uh, 2006, I've probably still got the emails as well from uh, from all that time ago. But um, And... Um, I ordered the drum, Steve sent it to me, I couldn't wait to pick it up, um, and uh, it's never been a disappointment, uh, I've still got the original head for it somewhere, the original batter head, because uh, I've got uh, the good old coated ambassador on the on the top there, um, that's the original snare side head, um, which I probably should have changed, the, the original wires as well, these are pure sound uh, 20 strands. And um, while well, I possibly should have changed the wires in the bottom head, um, I'm not that precious about it. You can easily buy them, you know, and no one will even know or care anyway. So, um, but yeah, I got I got the drum, and uh, the first thing I do these days with uh, with this sort of drum is I get another coated ambassador. And uh, I keep the logo head for the most part. I kind of failed to do that on a couple of drums, which uh, uh, was a bit silly. I, I didn't think about it at the time, but uh, it's certainly what I do now. And uh, I remember it, it's it's gone a little since, but I remember the, the first time I took the head off off the drum. Um, obviously, if you ever had a new drum kit or a new snare drum, a new wooden snare drum. You take the uh, you, you take the head off, and you get a whiff of the wood. And usually, it's a lovely, fresh, clean uh, wood smell that's generally quite uh, you know it's not a an unappealing smell. And the funny thing with this was it was actually not that, um, as I will come to in a moment, which I'm sure had a lot to do with it. Um, to take the head off this particular drum. I got a mixture, or somewhere in between, uh, a new smelling drum and a museum piece. It was the most strange smell, it, and it was kind of leaning more towards the sort of musky, museum-y, old wood type smell. Uh, it was really quite strange. It's dissipated a little bit since. The drum's obviously seven years old now, but um, and I don't take the head off very often, but uh, it was an amazing smell, and if I could have... Uh, captured that smell um, uh, that would have been fantastic even if it was just to uh, reminisce on but uh, background on the drum itself or rather the wood um, Timeless Timber uh, was 
it, it's, a, it's a generic name uh, more than anything else. Um, it's uh, in the I can't remember the exact dates, but the late eighteen hundreds or say last the last quarter, I think it would have been of the of the eighteen hundreds. Uh, lots and lots of wood was logged and felled out uh, around the area of Lake Superior in North America and what uh, happens to, uh, as they uh, probably still do today actually loggers, um, they felled the logs, they stripped them down and then they floated them down the river or the lake in this particular instance and a lot of these logs sunk in, uh, well for whatever reason and they sunk to the bottom of Lake Superior, which, if you don't know of Lake Superior, it is the biggest of the Great Lakes. Uh, it's more like a small ocean, I think, more than anything else. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a massive, massive lake, and it's really quite deep as well. And uh, the temperature gets to, uh, I think it was around a, a sort of, at the bottom anyway, about 4 degrees. Uh, so it's relatively cold. And what happened was... Uh, Someone came along about 125 years later, or just under 120 years later, and happened to find all of these logs that had sunk to the bottom of the lake. And the logs were uh, floated and obviously uh, dried out, and the wood was marketed and sold on. And uh, I, I don't know who actually found it, whether it was Johnny Craviotto or whether it was uh, John Good. It's the sort of thing that John Good does, really, so I wouldn't be surprised if it was him. Either way, um, the uh, between John, well, Johnny made the shells, DW um, marketed the initial run, as I said, which was 200 drums of the maple, and then uh, a year or two later they did 200 of the birch as well. Um, I won't go into the differences between the maple and the birch as far as aesthetics are concerned. It's generally quite easy to tell which one's which. But uh, sound-wise, the, the thing with these drums is that uh, apparently the cold water uh, had an effect on the wood itself and it gives these particular drums a slightly different, I think uh, it was described as a slightly more pure tone. Um, unfortunately my ear's not so fantastically good that I could probably pick that out but uh, as I will come to a bit later on when I do a sound file um, it does definitely have a little something that uh, other maple drums just don't have. And uh, actually, what well, I remember, there was actually, uh, I don't remember how many kits. DW did uh, a load of kits in Timeless Timber as well. Um, and you may have seen those. I think I have seen one that was actually in this finish as well, uh, which, obviously, which is a natural finish. And I don't know who actually owned it, but it was uh, Jeff, uh, is it Jeff Campitelli? Uh, it was Joe Satriani's drummer anyway. I know that he recorded. Uh, I think it was super colossal with a timeless timber um, uh, Craviotto kit. Uh, with DW was badged um, some years ago, uh, and I've got a feeling that Ron Danette owned that, or at least had something to do with that. So um, go away and listen to that album, and you'll get an idea of what the kit sounds like. Um, because I remember seeing pictures of him actually in the studio with uh, with the kit, so uh, and it's the, the same wood. But uh, the kits that DW did were um, they had uh, a rose pattern around the centre of the each of the drums. Uh, it was a nice finish, uh, but you'll be as I said, you'll be able to tell with the, the rose patterning round uh, round each of the drums. And they were something like a, a seven piece kit. Or something, and I think they were about ten thousand dollars each. Mere chump change. Uh, coming around to this drum, anyway. As I said, it's a one of one. It's a fourteen by five and a half shell. Uh, it's twenty-four karat gold hardware. And uh, as with a lot of the the, the Craviotto, uh, well, the higher end Craviotto stuff, um, John Aldridge did the engraving round 
the hoops. The uh, it's got the, the obviously ten uh, double-ended tube lugs with the diamond uh, base there. Uh, it's got a tr a trick, a gold-plated trick GS zero zero seven snare. Pure sound wires there. The bottom, where well, in fact both of the heads were originally Remo. Um, this is kind of one of the drums that got me really started on being a massive fan of Johnny Craviotto's bearing edges. And if you've never seen one of his bearing edges, which I'm sure I've covered in other videos, but uh, they are absolutely fantastic. They really are the best edges that you could find on a wood snare drum. And uh, I'll uh, save me talking into the drum there, causing it to rattle. I'll uh, take uh, take some better footage of this particular drum and the edges, so you can get an idea of what I'm going on about a bit later. But um, it's a it's a it's a favourite drum, and it's a favourite drum because, as I said, it represents something I never thought I would have. Um, I've never regretted buying it. Um, I have gigged it. I, I gigged it probably um, in, I think it was probably late 2006, maybe early 2007. Uh, I did a last minute uh, a gig, uh, which was just a brushes gig. Well, it was brushes and sticks, and but it was just basically, it was me and the snare drum. Um, and two of my mates on acoustic guitar. And I have to say, it was actually one of the most fun gigs I've ever done because I had to sit and think about what I was doing most of the time and uh, it really was quite entertaining for me but, uh, I took this drum down and it was absolutely fantastic it really was and uh, the two guys I think liked it as well but uh, so I, I've only done really that gig with it I have recorded with it um, certainly once um, it may have been may have been one of one, at least once other but uh, I've certainly recorded it with it once and even then it's uh, I can listen back to the track that I did um, and that would have been in 2000 and uh, that would have been late 2006 early 2007 and I can listen back to that and I could always still tell which which track with this snare drum was on um, it's, it's just from the sounds um, so um, I may or may not decide to post that because it was only a demo and uh, I uh, I kind of left that band very soon after anyway um, so I hope we'll see if I can find a copy of it and I may stick it up, I don't know but um, yeah this I would say oh, there's something else on there for you um, that says, well obviously that's my name you can get a uh, a half decent look at that. There you go. That's my name on there. That's uh, on the badge. And um, yeah, that, I've actually got uh, another plate that came with that. It, uh, it didn't originally have my name on it. Um, one was uh, this. This one was done specially for me. Um, and I've got the other blank plate um, somewhere. It's probably in here somewhere, and I just don't know where it is. I haven't seen it in years. But um, yeah, I've got. I think I've got a certificate with this as well, actually, and that'll probably uh, still be knocking around somewhere. I don't throw these things away, uh, obviously. But uh, yeah, so uh, Craviato Lake Superior Tone Miss Timber. This drum was custom crafted for me, Steve Maxwell Sapphire Collection, and it's a special one of one. Oh, sorry, it's a serial one of one. So, uh, yeah. And um, my good buddy, Dave from Perth, uh, as I mentioned, I think, on the, the last video uh, from the Drummer World Forum, he has one of these as well. And his drum is called Phoenix. And um, I've never seen it in person, but I've seen some good photos of it. And... Um, I'm not sure whether mine is prettier or his is prettier. So Dave, if you watch this, send me some more photos and I'll have another look. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So there you go. Caraviotto, Timeless Timber, one of one.
one of my favourite drums. And uh, what I do is I'll, I'll do a close up of the uh, of the drum on the stand, and uh, and then I'll knock together um, a quick sound file of me playing it on the kit. Cheers. Okay, so here we are again. I've got the snare behind the kit. My uh, one of my favourite snares behind my favourite Craviato kit. Uh, it's also my only Craviato kit, so I don't have much choice there. But um, Anyway, here we go. Sugar, sugar never was so sweet. 